I love daytime recording. First off, I get the best light. I look I look about five years younger during the daytime. Um, at night, I, I look weathered. I look uh, I look as though I look as though life is has uh, beaten me uh, in a TKO. But right now, I just feel great, and I always just feel like, oh man, like it just it feels like it feels like it's your job when you do it on the weekend. You know what I mean? It's like it feels like like you're just like Joe Rogan. Like I like I think I think we all have it harder than Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just wait, like yeah, and there might be people that like want to like gut him like a fish for saying something <laughs> or having the wrong guy on, but like he doesn't have to work all day and then come come in and, and do a podcast. It's true. Dude. It's I true. don't know. Just won't somebody think of us, yeah. the uh, <laughs> capital P podcasters. We'll tell them uh, that when we go on. It, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, if you get invited, I'll be like, in here, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, Joe, you don't, Joe, you don't know shit. You don't, you don't have, you don't have, you don't, you walk a mile in my shoes, Mr. <laughs> Fear Factor. Uh, yeah. From the five to the six, we be in the mix with that rare candy paint job on the whip. I need food for the kids, money for the rent. Fuck a lockdown, baby, I can't do that shit. And I don't ever vote, cause I'm fucking broke. And either way, I know the police ain't gon' leave me alone. On a plane by the visit Glen Rock, me crypto told me I should bring the Glock with me. So I packed up my piece and I'm sliding. Cause we might get caught up in a riot. Middle finger Trump, middle finger Biden. Fuck a left, fuck a right, is you riding? Boy, you love to see it, dudes rocking. Ain't no politics, baby, we just talking. From the birds to the bricks, we be in the mix. With that rare candy paint. Job on a whip, who you with? But anyways, I am really happy to welcome uh, a, a true podcast crossover. One of my favorite, favorite shows that I listen to, um, even when when the subject matter I, is something I've never even heard of, um, which is always the best, which means you know you are connected to a show um, when you don't care what the subject source material is and you just know you're in for a good time. Um, it's the Art of Darkness podcast. And um, you guys remember from a previous episode called Ego Death, Brad Kelly, but we actually brought his co-host on, uh, Kevin Kautzman, uh, and they run an awesome show. Now, everybody hit pause, go uh, check them out, and then make sure you go to patreon.com slash Art of Dark Pod. Uh, yeah. And look, dude, first off, if I had one criticism of Art of Darkness... It's uh, you guys give away a lot of stuff for free that I would I would get so <laughs> scheming patty hands and be like, oh, you want to know how this guy died? Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, you, you want to know the last uh, 10 years of his life? Hop <laughs> over. But you guys really give away like a like a huge thing. Have you guys ever thought about just swiping it away from people every once in a while? Like, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we like giving away things for free. We're generous, you know, we're yeah. generous in spirit. And, and, uh, but, you know, I can definitely see a, uh, a version in the future where it looks a little different, uh, in terms of what's behind the paywall and what's not. But we'll figure uh, that out. Brad, as we go. You, you did the one episode where you, you released a core episode just for patreon and and that saw yeah. a boost you know dennis yeah. johnson so yeah. yeah we we talk about it we we want to create like a like a thing that stands on its own that's outside of the paywall i think that was always our kind of goal right. mm -hmm. uh but we are we're scheming because in the long run brad and i are both we're both family men we're both busy guys we got yeah. a lot going on in the long run we'd love to see it become a, a sustainable thing that we could do for another 10 20 years uh until one of us falls off the face of the earth or or what have you yeah but thank you and i'm i'm glad to uh to be on rare candy i am a fan especially okay. since we since we had uh you mm -hmm. on glenn i have i have really begun to listen to rare candy in a, in a pretty devoted way so this is cool yeah. that right. was a lot of fun i i did um actually yeah i did i, I did make my aod um uh debut about well, what was it about a month or two ago it feels i don't know i podcast time is like a couple a months ago yeah it's a completely like different uh <laughs> thing i don't i have no idea when anything ever happens but yep. uh i went went on to talk about edgar Allan poe and um one of some really cool stuff on there so if you guys uh want an entry point i guess from this show go ahead and check that one out yeah, and um so we had so, a lot of fun it was cool to have you man we'll, we'll get you back in there someday i will do anything you know? and by the way you will be sued if you do the michael Crichton episode without me i'm just i just <laughs> it's not i don't mean to say that like in a mean way i'm just saying yeah. no like, no yeah, no yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Was, there was a uh, i think there was some chatter about that in our telegram or somewhere and i i immediately was like well glenn's got to be involved with that there's no way yeah. we're, we're i know your lawyer is dan so. baltic but i'm willing to take i'm willing to put my guy <laughs> who's not i haven't hired yet i guess it can't be him but you know 
<laughs> That'd be funny if it was. If I just was like, actually, he's my lawyer. Under so, another, yeah. under yeah. another yeah. Uh, screen name. <laughs> if yeah. my retainer was uh, five dollars more. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. It's a, in court. It's it's the Nutman versus Dan Baltic. Uh, in yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I had a question for both of you guys. Now I we talked about this with Brad a little bit last time, but I want to hear from both of you guys. All right, there's so so somebody gives you a proposition or a threat. Right, you have to switch lives with one of your subjects lives complete lives oh. one for one who do you pick Whoa. you guys have covered a lot of people and yeah. some people i know who i wouldn't pick from you guys like i wouldn't pick like david foster wallace because oh. i wouldn't pick that i wouldn't pick no. lovecraft no but no. there's a few well, who would you got who do you guys think i mean yeah that's actually that's a pretty good question uh I don't know, Kevin. Did any leap to mind? I can't I, listen. I, I mean, one. I mean, the first thing that pops to my mind is, is Stanley Kubrick because Agreed. he lived a, a good long life. He was uh, obviously a genius and a no, there, no greater filmmaker. There are different degrees of greatness, but in terms of the the medium, what he accomplished, the the span of his interests. Right, you've got Barry Lyndon over here. You've got Eyes Wide Shut over here. You've got he kind of did it all. And uh, was also somehow self-made and stood aside from the industry. He didn't need Hollywood. I mean, yeah, in any case. And his life seems to have been, I mean, he was, you know, cruel to his actors and had problems like anybody else. But he seemed to really, um, of the subjects we covered, I wouldn't say he was a monster monster no. the way that like Brando was. You got to be a little yeah. cruel to your guys. You know, just, to, yeah, you can't be. I'm, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, making yeah, a movie yeah. making a movie yeah. it's a dictatorship yeah right? i mean yeah. yeah he was a regular yeah. prick. he was just like a regular prick like you know but but <laughs> but with like the juice to know how good he was like, right. with some self-awareness and just no and not really even trying to mend relationships he was kind of like look man this is a movie like we don't ever have to speak to each other ever again you know like it's <laughs> right. totally fine or i'll call I, you 50 times a day maybe yeah. you know well and that's it and i used to hang out with an old timer uh in in manhattan at this bar that uh they they used to call me the mayor of this bar which is maybe some insight into my <laughs> my personal <laughs> darkness but uh yeah. and it was in a uh it's in an in, in indian restaurant and this old timer there uh worked on practical effects for yeah. for movies including rosemary's baby he loved to tell the, the story about the pig's blood for rosemary's baby wow but he also worked on uh, 2001. And so all you had to do to get him going after he had a few uh, glasses of white wine was to mention Stanley Kubrick and he'd go, that fuck, I hate yeah. that. That guy was, he was so, you know, because apparently Stanley, 8 a.m., phone would ring in Manhattan yeah. and, you know, in New York and he would be on the line and he would just give them an ear beating for an hour. And it was over the models in 2001, the little, you know, mm. anyway. So fun little anecdote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, 2001, 2001. I mean, you figure out how many times he's had like some of the greatest ach achievements of film. Like, I mean, just it, I would I probably wouldn't be that nice of a guy if I did that. Like, it's like, dude, I just made a space movie that is 4000 times sicker than the people who think I made the moon landing footage. Like, I actually made <laughs> like, it's insulting that you think I made the moon landing footage because it looks like shit compared to what I did in the 60s. That looks better than Star Wars. That was 10 years later, almost like it's just it looks I mean, I, I, I know it's not a hot take or anything, but that is still to me probably the greatest when you take everything into account, the greatest achievement in film like ever. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah, one of the sure. for sure. We're going to get you right back to the episode. But I just wanted to let you guys know of a few other things we offer at Rare Candy Industries. We have a Substack with free and paid subscription options. Free subscribers get access to all written content. That includes Bob's Red Pill. That's the best thing going on the internet right now. Trust me. Paid subscribers get full access to our premium episode feed. And that's just every episode we don't necessarily want to share with the general public, if you know what I'm saying. Again, that's rarecandy.substack.com. We also have merch. That link's a little long for me to say right now, but go to the description, go to our merch store, and find a shirt that's right for you. We have Rare Candy shirts, Dr. Bronner soap label shirts reishi mushroom shirts all types of stuff there check it out there's got to be something for you and lastly check us out on social media on instagram we're rare candy pod but on twitter we're at rare candy pod one all right enough of that let's get you back into the episode
You know, I have another little 2001 factoid while, while Brad gets his uh, brain wrapped I, I'm literally stuff. looking because I'm like, man, yeah, no, everyone I, I think of, I'm like, oh, I don't want that. Pick yeah, Joseph yeah, Conrad, yeah. dude. Pick Joseph yeah. Conrad. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> anyway. Not, uh, no, no. So I saw a screening of 2001 at the United Palace um, in, in Washington Heights, which is this big renovated uh, – old movie house. It's like one screen. It's a whole long story, but the last film that they screened, I think in the sixties before it shut down and then turned into like some like evangelical church bought it and took care of it. But then now they screen movies there. Um, it was 2001. So they, they screened it again a few years ago and they had one of the actors who played one of the astronauts. I can't remember if it was Poole or Bowman, but mm. the actor came on, you know, on stage and kind of gave an introduction he gave an entire speech that he remembered, which had been cut from the film. <laughs> so he was, he was getting to live a fantasy, but he, po he pointed out there's a continuity error in 2001 that everybody can enjoy. You know, when they, when they finally, when they, when he gets to the space station on his way, I think to the moon, you know, you have all those incredible moments mm -hmm. where he's in the space station and he goes and he meets, I think the international, um, scientists who are unable, who don't have the clearance and don't quite know what's going on. Do you know the scene I'm talking about? Uh -huh, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is a, I can't remember the color exactly, but it might be blue or red, but there's a shawl or some sort of a coat that's hanging over one of the, um, one of the chairs in that scene. And between cuts, you can see it goes missing. And so it's a very clear, very glaring continuity error in 2001. If you pay attention closely, he there was no way for him to cut around it. So he added in a voiceover saying there's a lost jacket or something, you know, a few minutes, moments later, just so it's covered because it ha it's Kubrick. We're not yeah. getting nothing is going to be out of place. In any case, look for that in 2001. It was such just such a cool story, and the uh, the actor said, he, you know, he and his wife had seen the movie so many times. His wife finally caught it and said, "Oh my God, look at this!" So there you go, yeah. Kubrick's not famous attention. Yeah, and not only was is that. Right. Stanley Kubrick was a guy that was doing exactly what he should be doing in life. I think that's not that's fair to say. But also the fact is, is that we as a society benefited from him not doing anything else because he would have been a serial killer. I think if you if you <laughs> like like truly like you think about that <laughs> stuff, like all these guys that have these weird things where you're like, well, that guy was a weirdo. It's like, yeah, but what if he like didn't have this all encompassing psychotic obsession with yeah. making film, which yeah. consumes your whole life? basically like if that dude just had like idle time in a hotel dude are you kidding me yeah he'd be he'd be a serial killer or like the government would have to recruit him into like counterintelligence or something uh, right like, right yeah. like what well, i, I, and I think we're living through some of this probably i think a lot of these guys are building apps you know it's not good it's, <laughs> we need to get we need to get people back into the theater and back into the arts i'm quite serious i mean we laugh, I, no, I agree. An element. it's like we're you know we're we're putting way too much value on the big spreadsheet in the sky we need to be getting back into the arts for sure. It's one of the theses of our, uh, of yeah. our pod. Brad, you, you had to have made a choice by now. Yeah, right? No, yeah. I'm kind of thinking through it. I mean, for me, so many of the people we cover sort of intentionally have like yeah. stuff that happened to them or stuff that they did or stuff that they had to like, uh, live through the remorse of. And so I don't really want any of those stories, right? Like, um, I think somebody who didn't, um, this is a uh, this is actually the the that one behind the paywall core episode we we mentioned Dennis Johnson, you know, uh, uh, you know, came out of the Washington D.C. area, had traveled as a kid because his, his dad was his, speaking of intelligence. His dad was in somehow it was a CIA liaison, mm -hmm. and then kind of super talented right out of the gate. Has some dissolute years where he's drinking and doing drugs and it's kind of kind of lost, and then kind of throws himself back on the scene a little bit later than you know maybe a lot of writers kind of get their uh get their big break and then just writes some of the greatest uh works of american fiction of the last 20 i guess 30 years now and lives kind of a cool life at the back end of it right sort of went through his bumps and bruises but definitely sure. figured it out and at the end you're like yeah i, I would live on my ranch in my in in idaho and just crank out a novel every few years that sounds pretty good <laughs> i think eventually i know you guys will be covering cormac mccarthy uh yeah course, this year later like, this, like, year. this year that, he'd be a, a candidate for me like if i had to just pick one i mean he definitely had some like i don't want to live in the shack the like no running water shack for that long personally yeah. but i mean 
oh, okay, is it that or hmm, Mishima? Do I want to be Mishima? <laughs> right, no, probably right, not. No. <laughs> I love that he existed, but yeah. no, yeah, <laughs> like, like, uh, and you know, I, I will say one of you know, one of the best uh, recent episodes that you guys have, uh, is you know, we're a little biased on this program, but I, I would say John Lennon. I mean, he that mm. just there were there were things I thought I knew everything about him, but there were just yeah. certain. Thing. A lot of this stuff with his with his mom, you know, yeah. and all that stuff is is really interesting. And that's another guy. Thank God he could make music because hey. I yeah. don't think it would have gone well if he didn't. Like, I like no. truly. Like, I yeah. think we might have. I think he actually prolonged his life. Is actually my hot take by making music. <laughs> truly, I think he was. Oh, I think he's sure. a goner early in some weird yeah. bar fight or right. something. Yeah. Somebody yeah. just ices him out because he was like he was kind of a like a ruffian, you know, like kind mm -hmm. of a. <laughs> One of those kids that fights punches somebody just to like stand out, you know. Like, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but um, and, talk and about it would have gotten weirder and boozier as it went on if mm -hmm. he hadn't had right. Like, yeah. yeah. But so, yeah, like, let's use that episode. Let's use yeah. that episode as an example. Like, how much research are you doing? How long? Do, I read like a novel every couple weeks, and I feel like I'm like maxed to the gills. You know what I mean? And and how long? Both of you, I want to hear for both of these. I'm just using Lennon as an example, but like for any of these episodes, dude. How like how does it? books movies i mean how do you how do you do it yeah. well i can speak to the lennon episode and then maybe i'll segue into some I'll, we can talk about one that brad's done because that's the shtick of the show of of course is that i prepare an episode do the biographical profile of a dead artist then brad does the same and we go right. back and forth yeah so obviously with john lennon we're talking about this is a somebody would call big air right you mm -hmm. already kind of in your head know john he's a poster john lennon's a poster uh and obviously I have a very long personal relationship with the Beatles. Oh, yeah. um, uh, my mother was a huge Beatles fan. I took her to see Paul here in St. Paul. Um, Damn. So one of my favorite memories. Um, and, uh, you know, but in the case of, uh, you know, John, um, I knew we were dealing with somebody that is like, there's so much ink has been spilled about John Lennon. Uh I, I just, I got two of the biographies. I got, I got the one great biography. I, I, you know, I can't remember the name of it off the cuff, but if you go listen to the episode, I'm very clear about it. And when you, the biography that I got for John Lennon and in the background, I can see if I can find it, you know, as this episode goes on, but it was so well written. And that's one thing about this show is if, if we get, if you get a book that reads like a novel and this biography of John Lennon was written by a novelist and had that quality, the rest of the job becomes easy because then I can go and kind of, you know, I can go to Wikipedia and some other sources yeah. and just get the spine of his life mm -hmm. and then dip in and out of this book. I don't have to read this 1200 page book cover to cover. I, I feel like I have enough of a storytelling right. ability and enough of a sense of history and, um, and my own, I guess, voice where it's like, then it's, it's a little bit paint by numbers by now. Like I know how to do it in art of darkness episode. I kind of know what I feel like we have to cover. And then the rest kind of does itself. So, I mean, in terms of hours and everything, I mean, I think a, a good core episode probably takes 20 hours to prepare, um, would just be a guess. I mean, and that's, and you know, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll throw on like media in the background. Now, in the case of John and the Beatles, I didn't need to go back into the catalog so much. Like I, it's a part of been a part of my life for 20 years forever. In fact, from the time I was born, mm -hmm. but I will throw on biographies and documentaries. And you know, I watched a hard day's night and you try to like saturate yourself with the personality of the character. So it doesn't just end up being kind of a dry reading of, of text. You know, you want to be able to be a little extemporaneous. I mean, I, I call the episodes uh, seances which is maybe a little high, high flown, but I mean, I sometimes feel the presence of the person, sure. you know, that's a, sure. like a summoning thing. Yeah. Anyway, Brad, how did you, like, so let's take the Conrad episode. Conrad, for, for sure. Right? That was what yeah. I was going to say too. Yeah. Yeah. For, for yeah. Sure. yeah well, in Conrad, it, it, it's tricky because the, it differs somewhat depending on what medium the person works in. So, you know, you do a writer and their work is, the written word so you got to read but you know if you do an episode on andre you know did an episode on the russian director andre tarkovsky phenomenal uh, yeah phenomenal. It, i didn't read quite as much for that i, I, I made sure to watch all of his films because there was a there was a i don't know two or three that i hadn't seen before so mm -hmm. i made sure to watch those and then i did read some biographical material but like in the conrad episode i was <clears throat> i was i had read i don't know three or four of his books i guess before that before doing that um so I um, 
let's see i ended up reading heart of darkness again and uh the um oh the one about the terrorist secret uh, agent secret agent yeah i mm -hmm. keep thinking the last tyrant um mm -hmm. and uh and then a bunch of short stories but in determining what to read from their work i usually start with the biography yeah um depending on how familiar i am with them and that will help me understand what of their work is like most relevant to them biographically because what's most relevant to them biographically is not necessarily the same as what is their big book like that everybody knows about right mm -hmm. um so yeah so as you kind of go through that you you kind of realize like oh you know joseph conrad had different books and stories d based on different aspects of his life different parts of his career as a seaman and then you kind of pick and choose in there what you're what you're going to end up reading but i mean i end up reading i usually read the biographies pretty pretty uh extensively yeah. there's sometimes they get quite long though i mean oh yeah like kevin's talking you know it's not uncommon for well-known public figure for their biography to be 800 pages 900 pages and um you know you're gonna try and cram that into a four-hour show you know <laughs> you're not putting everything in there there's just no way to do that right yeah. um but like i'm working on an episode for uh the marquis de sade though oh. professor professor hext tell us yesterday it's supposed to be marquis no it's marquis in the french but the, apparently the english would say marquis. oh okay okay yeah, so yeah, he yeah. is the yeah, marquis de sade so i you know that's yeah. so mm -hmm. i got this you know i got this biography i'll read almost all of it um and then, yeah, then kind of pick up whatever material. Well, from, you know, and, and for the Marquis de Sade, there's going to be some field research too, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Right. we don't yeah. talk. We don't. On, talk dude, aren't you dedicated, Brad? Come on, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, twenty hours. I, I, would, tell you, <laughs> I would tell you. Uh, I didn't realize this dude was like making up moves in the 1700s. Like, there's he did stuff. I was like, I didn't know anybody ever did that. That doesn't even make. And it actually, it, it's the craziest. I, I can't even recommend it, but 120 Days of Sodom is I, one of the most unsettling reads of my of my life. <laughs> I, I bet. I mean, no, there's that 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 time was weird. Like when you have like the the Milton. I mean, not time. I'm talking about a span of you know 100 mm -hmm. or so years, but like Milton and all that stuff. Like those people were really tapped into something like that. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we still need to be even tapped into, to be honest. But like, I just the fact that we don't anymore like yeah. we we just we're kind of like post that and it's like but those guys with the books and the way they were living and stuff mm -hmm. um you know I, I i guess you know oh do you guys think you have to be dark to be successful <sighs> i think you have to be human i think you have to be human and i think that a fully realized human life is going to have to wrestle with all of that and i'm a huge david lynch fan and right. if you haven't read his Catching the Big Fish, I would encourage mm -hmm. that if you're an artist or interested in creativity. And he very famously in that book says, listen, you don't, a lot of young artists feel like they need to cultivate their suffering, cultivate their, I don't know the exact words, but you know, you, you have that sort of like suffering artist vibe. And he's like, that's ridiculous. Life is going to throw enough of it at you don't cultivate it. You're not going to be your most creative if you're in pain all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is a guy who made a racer head. So mm -hmm. what does that, what does that tell you? So I'm sort of of that school. Um, I don't know. Do you have to? I mean, I, I, yeah. we haven't covered a subject yet. Who's unblemished, shall right, I right. say. Um, and, and often the greatness does correspond to to crimes and sins, but not yeah. always. No. So it's not a case where you, you don't have to be a Marlon Brando uh, to achieve Brando-like results. So I think the short answer is like, no, you don't have to lean into it, but yes, you're human, so you have it. And the yeah. stuff that people want, the stuff that people resonate with has that shade of darkness. The most comic stuff is kind of laced with a sadness and a tragedy and a, even like a mean spiritedness. And the most tragic stuff is then sort of laced with, with levity and comedy. And I've said for a long time, and Brad has known me for a long time, there are really only two interesting things, sex and death. <laughs> and there, and there you go, Brad, what do you think? I don't know. It's a, a yeah, no, a that's, that's yeah. good. I, yeah. I mean, I, I tend to agree. I think, I think it's really easy to, well, one thing it's sort of like, um, even if some darkness sins committed against you or by you is um, a crucial ingredient for say some kind of artistic greatness. It also like 
999 out of a thousand times is crushes people, right? Like some of the stuff that that we might think of as like, oh, you know, like uh, Anna Kavan wrote these great novels because she went insane. Well, yeah, a bunch of other insane people went insane in that same asylum as her and nobody knows anything about those people. So, so that's on the one hand, it's like it can kind of stick out. Um, it's sort of survivor bias or whatever. Um, I do think there has to be, it's sort of a corollary, corollary of like um, the most interesting things happen to people who know how to tell the story about them. And and so I don't know that you have to I don't know that you have to cultivate darkness or you even have to have anything particularly dark about you. Everybody's got something, some weird secret, some fear, some some kind of pain. And if you can get in touch with that, then I think to some degree. Right. Um, then I think I think there's more I think there's more than enough. I, I guess almost like the answer is yes. But yeah, the amount is 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 there's plenty for everybody to go around and yeah. and it it's not an excuse for bad behavior and it doesn't no. mean that you have to turn into a total bastard um it's not right. uh, uh get get out of jail free card for bad behavior for no, sure for sure yeah yeah because i always tell this story like um my my aunt and uncle li um lived by san jose state university for for in the I guess it would have to have been the 60s with this when this happened. And they lived next door to a to this weird band that was doing seances and stuff. But they were like tweakers and stuff. Like they didn't look like they had their shit together, right? And we're like, oh man, who was like and they're telling me it's Fleetwood Mac. The the the, the, oh. the American part of Fleetwood Mac is like is there Lindsey Buckingham, he's a Bay Area guy. Stevie yeah. Nicks spent time in, in the South Bay uh as a child, who she was kind of all over California, but that they they were there and they were like all of a sudden and my aunt and uncle are not like party people or anything mm -hmm. like that. So they're kind of like almost like uh the neighbors in Beavis and Butthead kind of uh like just just kind of what the hell's going on over there. Right. But right. they were uh all of a sudden like you know a couple years this is when they were like a struggling blues band and stuff but then like mm -hmm. a couple years later it's just like wait really like these right. people are like make ran the music industry essentially for like when they were i mean they had still have maybe the yeah, most popular huge. album ever like uh yeah it's crazy one of the best shows I ever saw, Fleetwood Mac in New Jersey, I think in really? 2018. Uh, wow. Somebody took me to see it. And I never would have, I never would have gone to this. And I'm way, way in the back. It was like boomer paradise. Mm, they were, yeah. It was just yeah. it's staggering. Oh, yeah. What a moment. <laughs> I was watching the boomers watch the show. It was incredible. I felt so happy. I love that feeling. I love that. Uh, yeah, it really, really mm -hmm. was. I'm going to see, I'm going to go see Bob Dylan, the great Minnesotan Bob Dylan and, and Willie together. Yeah. Cool. I mean, You'd be there for the thing as much as the experience. Yeah, for sure. It'll be that interesting to watch. Yeah. It. yeah, so that'll be fun. Yeah, it's, in a way, it's sort of sometimes surprising that guys from that era are still alive and doing things just because it feels like we live on a different planet. In some ways, it feels like we do live on a different planet than the it one that weird. they got started on. It, and the ones that get taken early, it's like, there doesn't seem to be a science to it either. It's like Keith Richards is around. He's alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And it, that dude had, was communicating with satan and doing all these crazy things putting all sorts of sorts of toxic waste into his body yeah he's, right. he's good yeah yeah no big deal yeah he's just all right <laughs> kenneth anger lived forever you know like all yeah. like all these guys like they they live for so long there doesn't seem to be any be science of it but kevin you brought up minnesota and i'm glad i've been for some reason i mean probably because we just did a prince episode prince you're i listened mm -hmm. very very good yeah that gets the uh, yeah yeah. I, some of the Prince fans on YouTube are like, you actually got his age wrong when he looked at the yellow pages when he was 16 years old. I'm like, I don't care. I, I, I will never ed edit I, that. I, don't... <laughs> I, I am renting a room right now. My my studio right now is from a friend. It's in a friend's house. Uh, and he, he I'm not going to say hung out with Prince, but he was like, yeah. he was with people who knew Prince. So it's right. like here it's a thing, uh, like a real thing. Like my uh, soon to be mother-in-law she always tells a story about how when when they were younger uh she and a friend were out on like a thursday or friday night and a couple of people came over and said hey you want to come over come out to prince's house and like the pancake story is true and they, yeah. they would oh, send yeah. a limo or a car and he would just bring cool looking hip young scene people out to his place and try new music on them and play music and throw a party and then she does say Prince didn't serve the pancakes. <laughs> ah, yeah, <laughs> Prince is big, but in anyway, yeah. So yeah, I, huge, obviously here. So, yeah. He, yeah, and he, he's he was kind of like Willy Wonka, where it was like you just like, hey, you want to you like you totally purple down to the purple, essentially, like like a mm -hmm. little guy that's like very dry and stoic, um, out of nowhere could 
start singing from his body, you know, the pit of his stomach and talk about some stuff that nobody would ever talk about in a pop song. But like, it, uh, again, Minnesota, I mean, you have like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, you have all these, all these bands, Bob Dylan, you have all these, uh, what, Husker do, right. Are they Minnesota? Yeah, I think yeah, there's all right. these bands that are from there. What is it about that place? Cause I just think of Fargo. When I, you think of the show Fargo. Uh, yeah. Well, see, that's the thing about the show. You see, now, the, the show Fargo, people have a tendency to think that it's like ironic and, and interesting because this isn't a violent place. I think we all know that this place can be as violent as anywhere in the world. It gets very real out here. Mm -hmm. uh, I al I've always resented the because I'm not from Minnesota, but I think I'm honorary by now. I have children by two different women from Minnesota. Nice, so yeah. hopefully, hopefully, you know, you know, and I'm not setting up franchises, you know, this should be it, but you, you get the idea. It's like, I've been here a long time. I went to the U I, I consider myself a, an adopted Minnesotan, but it's very different from where I grew up, North Dakota. Like there's a lot of little nuances and things. Um, yeah. Uh, what were we talking? Oh, Fargo. Yeah, no, it's th th that that Prairie Home Companion vision of Minnesota. I'm so glad, good riddance, that, that that's sort of been wiped off the face yeah. of the earth, both by recent events and also sort of the healer kind of going <laughs> that's away. True. 2020 yeah, made it a rid of it. Yeah, listen, it's, it's, it, was, it was all this bullshit. It's always been bullshit. It's always a lie. Like, I come from the place where people die from overdoses and fucking right. it's poverty and trailers and all that shit. And then you have this weird kind of nice whatever like this idea that it's not a city it's yeah. just one big suburb not true you've got there's a real city here it's called minneapolis uh and saint paul uh and um what is it i mean there's long ass winters uh a very reasonable cost of living even now uh i mean hey you know go pop on truly and see what it takes to get into a starter home in saint paul you might be surprised <laughs> um and one of the most educated populations in the country in terms of bachelor's degrees. I, I know that doesn't necessarily count for that much, but it's a, a, a fairly educated population. And there's a, been a vibrant art scene. There's a living theater scene here. There's a great music scene here. There's tons of venues. It's the kind of place where um, people will leave, go to New York, and then come back and then just start doing stuff here because they right. realize like you can't quite unless you have a bunch of money, you know? So it's a, it's got a real DIY vibe. I mean, one of my favorite, we got Harmar Superstar. I know he kind of had a, issues or whatever, but you know, uh, one of my favorite Minnesota cultural products is Mystery Science Theater 3000. I think MST3K mm -hmm. is just this iconic. And, and there's something about that DIY style um, that kind of defines, uh, Minnesota. And I mean, yeah, so it's, 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 it's often slept on. It's also like kind of the edge of the world. Like if you look at a map of, of, uh, like the light in North America, like at night, we're kind of it until like <laughs> Denver or, you know, th this is it. This is the last big city before it, the light falls off and you get into the big, the big empty great plains and i know there are different little cities there's omaha and yeah you got fargo and bit but this is it so it creates a kind of weird um we kind of quietly come with a chip on our shoulder too like hey we're out here too so i like it i like when people talk yeah. about you know whether it's their hometown or a place that they've you know called their home for a long time i love i love hearing about it like i have friends out here that claim the weirdest cities in the bay area that nobody nobody cares about like whatsoever like i had a, we have a town called milpitas out here and it's built on a landfill just pure landfill and it smells like it too no no joke like you yeah. you'll be on the freeway the neighboring freeway and it smells terrible oh. and um but there was one guy who was like we brought up that it smelled bad and he's like don't ever say that around me and i was like well <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, come on, dude. Like, you know, it smells. You know, right? it smells. Yeah. He's like, he's like, I don't know, man. He's like, I just wouldn't show up on like, you know, Calavera Street saying that, dude. I'm like, I've seen Calavera Street. There's like Toyota Sienna minivans uh, just driving around everywhere. It's not, uh, but I love now that in retrospect, 15 years later, I love going like, yeah, you know what, dude? Like, you should be excited about your hometown like that. Somebody, somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. enjoy it or, you know, get some out of it or go somewhere else. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I want to know about how this podcast, Art of Darkness, formed, because um, you guys are similar. Like, Sai and I have known each other since eighth grade. I think you guys, if I have this correct, met in grad school yeah, or, or something like that. But it, that's, you know, that's still a reasonable amount of time to, to be knowing somebody in a in a sphere of Twitter where most people are like, I haven't seen my co-host face before. 
right you know like <laughs> right, like right, right. and he won't he won't share any information with me because i uh he thinks i'm a fed you know like that that's a, it's a very strange world to it's not be even in. a joke it's not even a joke it's not a joke like, yeah, I, 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 like, like, it's funny to talk about but yeah, it's like, it's, I, yeah. i'm like dude they'll be like yeah we, they, we did our first face docs two years in i'm like what yeah, yeah. <laughs> they and these are the same people who will warn you about mk ultra and you go you guys realize you're living it right yeah you're doing yeah. it you're, yeah. you're in it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the my lady Avi is not. It's not. It's not. Uh, okay. okay, this is a, this is a uh, safe space for the Miladies. I love the Miladies. I'm a huge Miladies respecter. My one of my major group chats with some of the key uh, women in my life. It's called Miladies Fan Club. So this is a shout out to the Miladies. Yeah, I've been wow. in crypto for a long time. Oh, oh yeah. have you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. we're we're kind of back, aren't we? Oh, we're back. Okay. <laughs> This this yeah. started out as I mean the guy's name is Crypto Side and that's not like a philosophical like crypto yeah. transgressor he was a, a trader our first mm. five episodes he's like working the charts nice. he's right. like uh, on there so are uh, we so are we gonna make it, are funny and I, when I was just yeah. I mean the I gotta say because I've I've been like on and off back on Twitter like three accounts now four accounts deep or so and I. I like I the 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 crypto Twitter is way more fun than whatever we got going. On. I don't hate us like the, our little think circle we got going on, mm. but the crypto Twitter people have way more fun than we do, and they're not less like is that thing's bad and sh you know. And it's just like I I love that. And it's I gotta get uh I gotta get back on that. I don't know if, if you, you wanna dude. It's now, I follow no. I follow crypto yeah. Twitter. I mean I'm uh, professionally yeah. in crypto uh, crypto. I'll just say that we'll leave it. At, right. We don't have to turn this into a crypto podcast. Crypto zoologist. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, listen, if you want good alpha for the next cycle, follow the Miladies because the Miladies yeah. are responsible for a lot of the meme pumps and they're quietly running the crypto yeah. market uh, yeah. for the, for people who are on the inside. So you can do a hell of a lot. Uh, the Miladies also, are they're funny and they're yeah. accurate and they're smart. Yeah, you could right. say that. Sure. Yeah, and I think I think the floor for a milady right now is about fifteen thousand dollars in ETH, which is just Jesus. incredible to think about. Um, I was like, I should buy one of these. Never mind. Um, but I I yeah. was I, I do like their uh, they have the Schizo Bros. Like it's a milady yeah. derivative. Those are incredible. They're creating this incredible uh, art scene all yeah. online, all and it's real anarchistic and it's real punk and it's real dangerous and weird and it's i love it in any case what was the question again glenn sorry well yeah. i i mean i will ask it again but i just i'm like i've we've talked about this since the beginning i owned some i was never savvy enough to trade it and do stuff like that but i like i like own some i'm like dude we're all on this like weird dissident thing but there was always this like hatred towards crypto where i was yeah. like dude like are you just that big of like the u.s dollar you yeah you love the dollar so like you're just like <laughs> yeah. that you just like i love it so much and it's doing so well you know mm. like I, I i just it's so cool and i just am so pro you i i get it that's fine but like i always thought that was an interesting the people kind of just eh, kind of the same way that people cast off john lennon right on twitter it's mm. like oh loser mm. libtard you're like well okay but uh we're talking yeah about yeah talking about something great here but yeah. um i actually asked how you guys met like i like oh, talk right, right, about right. or not yeah. well you got the in show you guys met in school but like what is it be like hey man there's a lot of weird people that made art should we talk about them like what is it uh, you know how yeah. did that happen? well this this would be i guess uh, our third actual podcast is that at least second oh, maybe second okay. and a half podcast wow. um and we'd started one uh when we were in graduate school and i think um and my from my end of them they g generally deteriorated into just like being way too inebriated to actually have a show and they weren't really aimed in any direction they were just sort of whatever um and sounds like us yeah, <laughs> yeah you guys you guys are way more put together than you guys just, we were just, yeah. it was just a vodcast and we, yeah. we had no idea what we were doing however i am well, it was like 20 it was like 2010 we, although also or 20 right we maybe. should have we should have been buying bitcoin and right. not yeah, exactly. uh yeah, yeah. yeah dicking yeah. around but yeah. yeah yeah we all do that envelope math like damn if only i had that right. in 20 2009 yeah. it'd be over right now yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. i wouldn't <laughs> care about anything in the world yeah I would, just like, yeah. yeah exactly um so well, who, who like when you guys meet what's the first day like in the movie like the biopic does oh. kevin go up to brad and be like what's up dude like what, how does it work uh, what happened like I feel like and how were the probably, how are the other grad students? I need to hear some like it oh, wasn't boy, all cool yeah. like you guys. I bet. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I yeah, flunked yeah. out of college. I love cringe. Yeah, grad come on, let's hear. <laughs> well, yeah. we probably met in uh, there's a class that all of the first years took together. We probably met at 
in that class, I would assume, I think it's probably the first time. I mean, they did try to like organize events where you would like meet each other, but I, I don't, th I don't think I met you. Maybe there's an orientation or something. I don't yeah, know. there might've been. We, yeah, but we definitely met and got to know each other through that class and everything. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. And you know, cause that's an interesting time. Just like when you, a person first goes away to college. I mean, I didn't go away to college. I like I went to a college by my parents' house. So, <laughs> so, uh, when you, you know, you go away to college, but you're also, there's that same thing where like everybody here doesn't know anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely like much more of a, it's easier to make friends when you're like 12 people who also don't have friends. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, you know, we kind of sorted into little, uh, you sort into little groups, subgroups of that larger group and, uh, go to the bar and there's, there's, um, we were fortunate enough to have a graduate school situation where, um, we got it. Uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't have a teaching load, which a lot of people in graduate school do, would have. Um, and, and particularly people getting MFAs like we did would normally have. So there was kind of a lot of free time. And I mean, you could use it to write, but you could also use it to get into trouble. So um, I feel like I split the difference on those two pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and then flash forward 10 years ish, and it's the pandemic time, seven years, yep. seven, eight years, we stayed in touch, we worked on these other kind of failed podcasts. And then pandemic time happens. And I think a lot of people did this during the pandemic. And I think there are a lot of dead podcasts now that were started then. Oh, but yeah. we, I think we came up with an idea together, we batted it around. Uh, and, and we just said, why don't we do you know, biographies of, of dead artists and cover it. And we, we batted names around. What was the terrible name that I came up with? Oh God. Heart, heart of artness. Something like <laughs> that. Yeah. Horrible. Hang on. Hang on. No, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a size left next. Left. Yeah, that'll be size uh, next crypto. Yeah. 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 Uh, cash tag heart. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. And we just batted around and then Brad, Brad jumped in and did burrows right away. And, yeah. and, you know, we knew we had something in the first three or four months because people started to want to come on. Which yeah, was cool. that, that was that what was, was interesting. Awesome. People started asking, you know, asking to come on. And at, at first we were like, we don't have guests on. <laughs> That's not what the show is. <laughs> right. And, you know, we eventually kind of figured out how to how to like make it work and and and, you know, learn how to do the episodes, learned how to, uh, you know, learned how to uh, kind of we started doing these darkroom episodes like what you came on for Glenn, which gave us an avenue to have guests on without making them, you know, commit yeah, to some multi-hour yeah, yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, there's been evolutions along the way, but it's kind of all sort of makes sense from that first episode. I think like the, the evolution of it, you can, you can kind of see it all there. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the, you know, I think part of the motivation for like the subject matter was, uh, uh the, the sort of theme of it is, well, you know, one thing, and this, and I can only speak for myself here, but actually flashing back to graduate school, which was like my first um, exposure to what the writing world is like. I mean, I knew a couple people from college before that who wrote and had published, but nothing on that scale where it's like this little... That a little factory for producing writers is the that's idea. Cr that's crazy. I kind of forget that about you, Brad, because before I got there, I had already done this other fellow. I was very much in the theater world, yeah, I mean, kind of that side of things. So yeah, I forgot that about you. Yeah. yeah I mean, I knew a couple, yeah. I knew a couple people in Idaho, but, um, but so anyway, in that translation, you know, like I, I still had a lot of, uh, I still had like a lot of fire in my belly and was a, a bit wilder than I am now. And there was this moment I had where it was just like, they want this shit to be so fucking boring. Yes. <laughs> Why do they want it to be so boring? We're not supposed to be boring. No. Like, and I wasn't even thinking like we should be doing like Hunter S. Thompson shit. I was just like, like, why are you like, why are why is there a schedule? Like, what do we like? What do we? <laughs> why am I reporting to a place at a time? This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Man. Like, if you want me to be able to develop as an artist, then I need to be able to do some what? Like, not even yeah. again, not even wild, but I need to. Give me, you know, you're going to get out of structure, like, out yeah. of structure. I yes. think is the, yeah. The, yeah, exactly. I, I yeah. know exactly so, what you mean. Yeah. And so it made me kind of think, thinking back, sort of like wanting to look at all the artists who, who not necessarily like broke down boundaries in some sort of cliched way, but like, let's look at what the life of a amazingly successful artist actually is. And you'll find out that it's not about going to conferences. It's not about getting things in on time, right? It's not about doing your taxes. There's like so many things that it's not about at all. Um, and I, I thought 
you know, those those stories still are interesting to me. No, you're supposed to lose sense of time when you're making it. Like truly, like right now we're reading uh, a book by Samuel Delaney called mm -hmm. Dahlgren. The Shit. entire book is just a guy that has no idea what's going on because he's just writing poetry. And he's just like, there, they'll be like, they'll be like, hey, man, like, where have you been the last three weeks? He's like, dude, I just saw you yesterday. They're like, no, yeah. like dude, that was three weeks ago. Like, and, and it's just it's like this <laughs> dystopian, cool. like anarchist, yeah. like punk thing, like where they're all living. It's like a Chaz kind of like area that they're living in. Uh, but it's just it's it's relatable in that sense where I'm like, I man like my work day goes by at a different rate than when i'm doing this right yeah, like we recorded for, i'm sure you guys know this like we've recorded for like we recorded for like three hours yesterday and it felt like an hour you know what yeah. i mean like it just yeah. was it was it was nothing from the five to the six we be in the mix with that red paint job on the wheel i need food for the kids money for the rest But yeah, like with the, you know, Kevin, I, you, one thing I notice on Art of Darkness podcast, you guys are very diplomatic about uh, how much you guys want to let out about certain things you might believe in. Um, sure. Something I could maybe take notes from, but. <laughs> well, it's uh, different. We do. It's our, it's different shows. That's all. That's all. Yeah. That's no, all. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I know, but I know what you guys, I mean, I get it. Like it's, it's, you want. You guys don't lose anything by doing that, which I think is good. Mm -hmm. Like, because there's there's that. Now, Kevin, anytime like the pharmaceutical industry gets brought up, <laughs> there's always for he doesn't like. Yeah, there's no way you were gonna escape this on this show. But like, yeah, the, we're, we're, we're I had to find out about this. You would you have a pretty hard line. I won't call you anti anything, but I'll just say you kind of are outspoken, not really like, uh, oh well, both sides this and that. You're kind of like, no, that's an evil industry. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a personal story about it that gets really heavy, but I mean, my, and I've told this online a number of times and I don't need any hemming or hawing or like, no, oh, no, I'm no, so no. sorry or whatever. But you know, when I was, when I was four years old, my father overdosed from a pharmaceutical that never should have been on the market. It's mm -hmm. called propoxyphene. You can look it up as early as the late seventies. They were, they were already warning saying, Hey, this isn't, this isn't good. This can kill people. Um, they finally took it off the market in the UK in 2005 and then in the United States in 2010. It went under the name Darvon Darvaset. It's an opioid. This is another thing. I. It's not an opioid crisis in America. It's a fixture of American life and it has been for 50 years. Okay. Uh, it's not a crisis if it's a fixture and nothing changes. It's baked in. Um, and so in any case, this propoxyphene is not very effective at killing pain. And if you take it in slightly elevated doses and or with alcohol, at, it will just stop your heart at, at, if you're unlucky. And uh, this is what killed my father. Uh, so I didn't get to have a father. Now, he had other problems. He's an addict and, you know, we have addiction in the family. He was, you know, he was not a saint. So I don't right, want to right, paint right, that picture either. But you grow up with that. You find that out kind of as you get into adulthood. I was actually down in grad school when I kind of got all the medical records and everything and kind of found this out. Yeah, I've got a little bitterness in my heart toward that industry. And yeah. uh, so a little little natural skepticism, which I think maybe carried me through the the recent manufactured fake plague, fake Let's go. Uh, yeah. PSYOP yeah. in a way where I go, you know, maybe, you know, the Christian scientists have something going for them. Maybe there's something going on over there. And, you know, and, and, and listen, I, you know, Western medicine is outstanding. If you've got a, if you've got a broken leg and a bone sticking out of your leg, there's no better medicine than Western medicine because Western medicine evolved right. during wartime and for military, yeah. everything in the West is about military shit. It, it uh -huh. has been forever. All right, fine. We're very good at like killing people and mending people that we've tried to kill or our own guys. Who, da, da, da. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, but every, this is a cliche, right? We're, we're not good at preventative medicine. We're not good at holistic care. We're not good at the big picture. We're terrible at uh, mental health and psychology. Psychiatry is fugazi. It's psychology is fugazi. They don't know anything. Neuroscience is a baby science. They don't know anything. And if you actually start talking to serious scientists, they go, we don't know anything. Oh, we man. Are. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Oh yeah. man, dude. There's a, there's a, just I'll bring up my boy, Michael Crichton. There's a funny part in one of his novels called Prey where he and he's been covering, you know, bioscience, all types of like crazy stuff for a long time with kind of a tongue in cheek humor uh, towards it. But there's there's a part of Prey where uh, his daughter now it, it turns out to be something completely different than where his daughter, the, the protagonist's daughter goes to a, a 
just wakes up with a bunch of rashes. And the day before he had gone and got some sort of vaccination, some sort of thing for his daughter, but he didn't think much of it. He's like, well, she's with the doctors. The doctor's going to put the thing in that needs to be, you know, put in whatever. He's just a dad, right? He's just like a classic dad, like tech dad who wasn't thinking of, he's like, this just needs to be done. This is a part mm -hmm. of a day that needs to be done. Well, the next day the kid's covered in rashes, like rolling around, doesn't sleep through the night and stuff. He goes back to the, um, to the hospital to talk to the doctor. And he's like, so like, is this normal? And he's like, he goes, now, which shot did she come in for? He's like, you're the doctor. He's like, yeah. like you know, like, say, like, you don't know what it's like, man, that is a big red pill. I know people who actually are pharmacists, like, and they, but they talk to doctors a lot and they're like, Dude, doctors are the dumbest fucking people. Like, oh, I, like yeah. it's, it's not to say you shouldn't go. It's to be like, understand that you're not talking to the almighty Oz. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you go to the doctor, like, just, just, I think we're a good, I think America's a good body shop. I don't know that we're the best mechanic. Mm. That, I like that metaphor. You you guys were so you were really I guess phrase, but I guess red pill to you. Like COVID was a major inflection point for you guys, from what I can hear on the pod. Is that fair to say? More so yeah, for me for than sure. more so for me than it was for him. Um, mm. however, I I married a very holistic uh woman, you know, like a woman who values like naturopathic care and stuff. So I, I always I always had a positive experience with those people. Like I didn't, it yeah. wasn't like these. You knew they weren't psychos no. or crazy. So, I just didn't yeah, think exactly. much about it one way or another. Like I'm mm -hmm. no joke, like a Richard Linklater character. Like I don't <laughs> think about things like that. Like I just, I, I for a long time, but I've always been a curious person. So yeah. I, I really, when I, after a while, look, we'll, we'll tell the, I, we've told this a lot, but not recently. Like I remember one time, like we were starting out with COVID and it's so funny. Like I, you guys might relate to this too. I feel like we're way more conscious when we had no listeners of what we were saying rather than yeah. now. Like when I, we were young, we we're like, oh, we don't, like, don't, don't say that. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I don't want to say that. I'd be accused of this. And there's like SoundCloud porn people listening. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. And, 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 yeah. Like, like, hopefully I don't piss off the pussy and bio girl that's listening yeah. to this, like, like or whatever. And yeah. uh, I clicked on this and reposted it or something. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways, like we were like saying this one time, and I, and I just remember like looking down one time. Our first time we ever talked about it was a couple months in, really talked about it. And like we looked down and we're like, we saw the I saw the arrows. We had arrows in our grocery store that yeah. were kind of and we made Pokemon <laughs> jokes, like the Pokemon gin oh, thing, like where we're yeah. like, this is so weird, like dumb. Like, like there were arrows. And, yeah. the, and and like everybody knew that, that that those didn't have magical power. Like you could go against the grain, but everyone would look at the guy doing it like, dude, what, dude? dude, don't do that. Like, like yeah, it's like right, somebody's yeah. watching. There's a camera on like, like big brother could just collapse this into a car compactor and take the whole Trader Joe's down because you did that. And yeah. uh, stop the spread. And I remember like one time, Cy, who's he's always had, you know, a bit different view on, on life. He's proven yeah. correct more and more every single day. But he like, I remember one time he just texted me. He goes, you know, this is all horseshit, right? <laughs> all and horseshit. I was just like, all yeah. of it. Like, I was like, I knew all that it. after a while, I was like, well, I've been back to work. I've been yeah, doing yeah. something like this isn't, this is not nearly 28 days later. Like this, this is not happening. Yeah. But I was like, all of it. And he's like, Nah, let's talk. Well, I'm still, I'm yeah, still yeah. embarrassed. It, it didn't take us, what would it take us a couple months to figure it out? It, I'm still embarrassed how long it took, took yeah. me, took us. And actually Serena, one of our guests, one of our friends that comes on, especially, you know, it's been a while since she's been on, but yeah, she, uh, she was texting me like, yeah, this lockdown shit doesn't make any sense. And I was kind of defending. It. I was like, well, it makes sense. You know, maybe we can, mm -hmm. you know, lock down a little bit. And then I, then like the next week, I'm like, holy shit, she's 100 percent right. And yeah, this, this is not. Yeah. And I think uh, it, I think it took I think most people had some kind of like there's revisionism on who see, like the yeah, situation yeah, yeah. it was. And there, yeah, there, for there's sure. There's a big revisionist people where that's like, nope, I knew it from the day one. It's like, right. dude, it was mm -hmm. a. Like for me, I hated my job. So when I was like, yeah. "Oh man, like I don't have to do this for yeah, a couple yeah. weeks," like right. so cool, I was just like, "I was like, no, there there is a patronage element to it." So yeah. we got to work from home. Yeah, um, I, they... I did. It changed my job from being mostly outdoors to being uh -huh. almost entirely at home. And like, uh -huh. I was like, "This is fine for a while." Uh -huh. Like, yeah. yeah. I'll a lot that. of people, like people, just don't realize when like true ugly fascism happens. Like the kind of treats they give you to yeah. like smooth it over you don't really see those much in the movies right, right? like right. you don't really you're just like wow why is anybody falling for this and it's like well, dude this guy's playing fifa for six figures yeah, at right. home like <laughs> like like yeah, of course they're gonna fall for this like, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i i think i like probably if i had a moment where i started like which sort of started me even thinking about it at all was actually when they cut they started cutting the checks to everybody and i was like there's no like this is just yeah. a cockamamie way yeah. of going like 
why don't this you can't just work out yeah. it, there's there's clearly manipulation happening here nobody's thinking about the impact that this is going to have like down the yeah. down the line yeah. on everything um yeah yeah so but yeah there's it was sort of all these little signposts along the way but i was like i say this all the time i'm just like a normal guy from like 2006 yeah, yeah. so Good i didn't you mean you i mean evil brad yeah evil. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> extremist right? yeah. yeah i don't know about that yeah <laughs> so, normal so, my ass yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so the other part was like the other part was like wait we trust I thought we weren't supposed to trust the big drug companies. I thought, well, that's the thing. I thought that's we all, all agreed to that like a decade that, ago. That we, we all pay lip them. service to that, right? Where everyone's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I can't trust doctors. Can't trust, right. you know, but it's 100%. When that, the rubber hits the road. Yeah. Like, that went the same way as the anti-war left, Brad. Mm-hmm. Where yeah, they, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. They I, that's the same way. I was like, I thought we weren't supposed to bomb yeah. people. What the hell's going on? Yeah. Yeah. We, took, we took that earnestly back in the day. We're like, oh, we're yeah, we're bought into this. And then, and then yeah. it switched and... It's like, wait, you guys change, not yeah. It's so. the we we have lived through the greatest psy, one of the greatest psyops of all time. Yeah. Also, as a generation of of people, the greatest bait and switch of all time oh. and rug pull. Yeah. I mean, it, we really did. We were credulous. We really kind of believed it. I think we were kind of the last chopper out of Nam in terms of actually <laughs> believing it. Yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. 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 Oh man. It, no, it, it just, I, I, it's one of those things like you see people that want to like, oh, let's move on. I get it. Right. Cause like, what can we do? We, can, we cannot change 2020. Right. I mean, I, I, maybe I'll develop some like primer like technology to do so, but I don't want to <laughs> like, like, and I, to be honest, like I, there, it was a weird, like, year for everything to just change and like you know personally for me my life's been better since then actually 2019 was a really bad year for me but i wasn't i mean look like seeing i i wasn't alone though like if i was alone during 2020 it would have been a completely different thing if i didn't have this it would have been a completely different thing like and i know a lot of people who didn't right like i know a lot of people who did like we had a we had a guy on from uh australia this guy hayden and he was like you i used to have to facetime my friend once a day to make sure he didn't kill himself Oh. yeah like like it was really bad like and like if he didn't pick up like i my it was really bad you know because they had in certain parts of australia they had like probably some of the worst uh some of the worst violations of human rights and, well, and we do after they yeah. were putting people in camps i mean yeah. you can t- say well they weren't really camps. Yeah. they were camps they were putting yeah. people they were in camps. camps. <laughs> no they were camps yeah yeah i mean that, yeah. it's australia so it was probably had like a like a dingo <laughs> aesthetic like and it probably seemed kind of cool the ca- oh, like, oh, God. No, like no 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 dude this is a camp well, they had, remember they had yeah. all the people <laughs> taking selfies like look at me and you know it's like a guy with six-pack abs or like a girl in yeah. bikini you know like we're at the camps it's not a camp yeah. you know right. and it was just like this is weird dude yeah, yeah. do you do you remember yeah. house pfizer and house moderna like like it was yeah. Uh, yeah, Harry yeah, Potter. Do. This <laughs> really happened. This happened. I, I lived in House Pfizer a couple times for a little bit. Oh, unfortunately, yeah. no. I, I these people that were just just all of a sudden. I mean, that's why. Like, and and I know both of you guys can attest to this. I know you guys are both a little bit um, different as far as your spiritual beliefs, but I actually think you guys have more in common um, in the fact that like you guys aren't both dogmatic i don't think which i which i like uh um, yeah, he's he, brad's a catholic even if he doesn't say it he was well, baptized know, catholic. he's, he's it, always no, in. You you're stop. always you're stop. always, you're stop. always you're in. Never he's never always leaves in. you it never yeah, le- yeah, no yeah, straight yeah, up yeah. dude like it, you can talk about how it's like you know wine that they buy it here and like you know, bread stuff like no nah, dude all that stuff's real like because i that's me too you know mm-hmm. and uh but the funny the thing about that is you saw people who had you know and a complete absence of spirituality or anything beyond the material, of course, they're going to fall for stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Because like, like, of course you are. So like, it is the, the, you know, the quote wherever in the absence of this humans will create it. Right. Mm-hmm. So in the absence oh, it, of, yeah, yeah. It's what they, it's what we did. It, it, it a hundred percent had the quality of a, of a secular religious mm-hmm. ritual. Yes. It was, I have to go and get my booster and it's very invasive and it, mm-hmm. you know, and the doc and everybody's in their mask. It was a massive ritual mm-hmm. that was performed across the planet. And I guarantee they tried different strategies for different populations that were probably pre-coordinated not saying it was conspiracy but they probably already had these contingents the australians will put up with this much yeah the americans in this state will put up with this much and also by the way we're going to test a lot of shit like a yeah. lot of uh, uh education trials were happening oh. it was a giant human experiment mm-hmm. at a scale that's never before uh, been conducted and we're all just supposed to move on like it never happened it's insane. It's mm-hmm. dystopian. I will not move on and I will nope. not shut up no. about it. And I don't care if it hurts my career uh, or anything else because it's 
extraordinarily important. And it, it shows me too. I've always known this. I'm sorry to talk over you. I've always no, go, go known ahead. this to be true, that we were living in this kind of reality. America does a very, very good job of kind of pasting it over. Um, we like to think that we're not this way, but we always were. We probably always have been as long as we've been alive. So for me, it was very validating to see it happen because I had a lot of my suspicions verify. I know what you mean. Churches closed, liquor stores open. Mm -hmm. We are run by a mobocracy and probably have been since the moment Kennedy's brains hit the back of the, the Lincoln uh, yeah. car. And it's just a reality. The, the, of course, the mob people, the godless mob people would want the liquor stores open. The church is closed. Yeah. I don't know, you know, and we could go into more nuance, but it anyway, I've had my suspicions verified and it's kind of a relief because now we know we're in a gloves off fight. Yeah. Right. So, in the open. so yeah. yeah, it's in the open. So thank you. Thank you for making it apparent. Uh, Agreed. I rip the bandaid off. Just yeah. rip the bandaid yeah. off. Just, just yeah. let me know that I'm not free. And and yeah. and let the boomers know before they go to their great uh, Fleetwood Mac concert in the sky that <laughs> that they were that they were nev never free. Like it, it, and and the cognitive dissonance and the pain that people are feeling about this right now is the most important story yeah. next to AI and tech. And but it's also like the same story and. Anyway, here we are. Yeah, absolutely. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> Brad. And I want to know, Brad. Brad, yeah. how do you view it, like spiritually, right now? Because I, I, again, you do. I think you guys do see the world a bit different from each other, but I think there's more common. Brad. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, th I think we're. I think well, Kevin and I are obviously we're common enough to that we can that we can talk um, and not step on each other's toes, right? Um, you know, I think there is a. Yeah, I definitely the last since 2020, or maybe even a little bit before there is and this is not intentional to do an art of darkness uh, uh, plug. But um, I think about f the life of Philip K. Dick talking Let's about go. seeing the black iron prison, right? This 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 yeah. boundary, this manipulative sort of boundary layer that's sort of just under the surface of everything. And. You know, he had these moments where he actually saw it, right? He actually laid eyes on the control mechanisms. And that that sort of happened these last, you know, few years. You you if you're paying attention to the right to certain things and you were looking at things a, a particular way, there were just obvious spectacle falsehoods yeah. taking place. And they become more transparent over time. And that's not a necessarily uh, uh, like to say that I even know what's happening or what the incentives are for no. people, but you just come across stuff and you're like, that's clearly not what actually happened or that's not what that person actually said or what that's what they said. It's not what they meant. This is all, and we're all just being sort of corralled psychologically. Um, and yeah. so as soon as you, you, you know, and your audience is in the same boat, I'm sure. Like mm -hmm. as soon as you start to see that, it's sort of like, hopefully it becomes harder to be manipulated. <laughs> I oh like yeah to think. <laughs> we, yeah no i and like that's the thing and I, i've always thought i i i i hate like splitting you know the opposition camp into like well this guy is actually not really the same opposition that i am or whatever but there were so many people that like really just spent the whole time wanting to point out like hypocrisy like yeah. oh the government's being hypocrisy anybody who hasn't seen the norm mcdonald bit on hypocrisy that's how much hypocrisy means right where he talks about uh bill cosby's uh uh you know i'm sure everybody's heard the joke but like yeah, the, yeah. the bill cosby where he's his buddy's like yeah he goes and the worst part about the whole bill cosby thing was the uh was was that he was a hypocrite and the right. guy and norm goes i'm pretty sure it was the rape actually right. that was the worst part <laughs> and uh right. because like the idea that like you're whoever's in power has to be coherent yeah that that's yeah. actually the reward that, that you way. get, right. which is why yeah. I stopped trying to do that. I have conflict. I dude, I, I I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that is the way to salvation. I also believe in like H.P. Lovecraft aliens underneath right. Antarctica. There you go. There you go. <laughs> like like yeah. I don't have to be coherent. Nobody does. Like you yeah. just got to be ethical, man. Like there's got to be a sense of ethics behind it. Yeah, the co being coherent being coherent is kind of a trap actually, because it yeah. forces you to kind of cut off all kinds of stuff, yeah. interesting parts of your. Agreed. your perspective in order to fit them into um but you know yeah. you well, kind of right. asked the, the sort of spiritual perspective on, on you know uh -huh. 
whatever this thing is we're talking about right this it's sort a of... bc ad thing we're in a we're in this like weird ad moment right now yeah like it's something yeah. happened it feels it's a like different it. thing yeah so what it, yeah that's what yeah I mean. I, I mean the one thing it, not that i was uh not that i was ever totally misled in this notion but you really came to you come around to thinking like oh none of those people actually give a shit about me or my family or anything that actually matters to me so, you know, you got to play the game. You've got to participate in the marketplace for a little bit. But like just none, none of anything they do that seems like they care about you is literally just manipulation. So just ha you have to you have to understand that the truth is somewhere below or above all the all that stuff. And they think that you're a complete sucker if you believe that anything they do is for your benefit. They right, just yeah. they, and they get off on it. Mm -hmm. They they harvest your louche for the archons mm -hmm. by deceiving you. And they also yeah. kind of have to like show you that what they're gonna do too. Right. They're very perverse. Oh they're yeah. Nat yeah, yeah. That's the Dark. worst part is when you know mm -hmm. everything and you see it coming and people are like they wouldn't do that or like yeah. the the institute the the and i hate the shit on the boomers too much but the boomers love of institutions it's like it's yeah. you cannot get through to them if if they if they are still an institution trustor you know mm -hmm. like they mm -hmm. they love they love the institution the fact that like you know i'm and i i remember like i didn't spend a long time on like the quote unquote left i remember thinking like well i grew up being like a you know one of those decent fucking person guys that's what in california you're, if you don't care about yeah. politics like just be a decent fucking person yeah. and you're told right. that that's barack obama blah blah, yeah, blah which means people. you have to do a certain yeah. thing exactly yeah. without you have to just not yeah. care <laughs> right. one yeah. side has to yeah. be passionate and the other side has to not care you're yeah. supposed to just not care even if you're like oh that's kind of weird but I don't care. You know, right. That's like what every stand-up comedian does now. Like they're just like, who even cares about that? It's like, yeah. well, some people do. And mm -hmm. but anyways, like that person. But then after a while, like I remember starting hearing certain people uh talking about like, oh, this left this this Chomsky. You hear all these names of like Chomsky. And I remember like Chomsky, like the one thing I ever liked that he like really said was like, hey, like when his form of anarchism was when I see an institution that's failing, I say don't rescue it. Like yeah. it's done. But then this is the guy that said, uh, let them starve to death if they don't want yeah, to take a shot. So, uh, yeah. I mean, like, like to me, it's like uh, the further away these people are from, like, actually applying their stuff. Like, yeah, he's not there was that so there were easy. there were so many people that had real serious, like so many public people whose opinions yeah. were on record, who had, you know, real serious claims about freedom, whatever, name it. Yeah. And then the rubber actually hit the road and it was like, you're at a rage against the machine. Concept, yeah, but you had to get yeah. vaccinated first. Oh, like, yeah, okay. You know, we saw we saw this Portland punk show, man. It was so funny. I don't know if anybody <laughs> thought it was going around. They, these people were wearing like no joke, like it looked like um, it looked like actual construction respirators for when you like remove asbestos. Yeah, like, was, I, I was like, sure. dude, I haven't seen that mask before. Like they yeah. they got like the they got like the twenty thirty seven masks like for yeah. like the, a couple cycles yeah. late. Like they got mm -hmm. the advanced stuff, and I was just like. To me, like I think life kind of natural as you get older, you you there's like a form of like segregation that happens where you're just like, yeah, that's not me. You know what I mean? Like I we're like it doesn't have to be a huge like I disavow this community or something. You're just like I'm older. I got my the friends I need. That usually shrinks uh, over time. But I remember thinking like, dude, man, I like. I just don't think I could ever talk to that person like that. You know what I mean? Somebody who's at the Not all mask Portland, Portland <laughs> yeah. punk show. Like if you're, what if you had like a cool five minute conversation with somebody and then they're like, Hey, what do you got going on later? Oh, I'm going to the all mask, like masked up, uh, boosted Portland punk show. And I'm just so like, there were, that tweet, can I have those five minutes back? Please? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> were they thinking the Portland mask block B L O C like, thanks uh, for supplying yeah. all literally all the masks we needed, Portland mask block. And I'm like, who who are these guys? Dude? What is this group that the is Portland mask, mask block? block dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I just I, I saw because I saw that and I um I didn't even read it. I was like, oh my God. I think I sent it to you. And you I, need to um, do a noir, you yeah. need to do like a noir style journey into the port, like Thomas Pynchon yeah. Yeah. like like style like thing. Cause you're there. So like yeah, you need I was, to I don't do, know if you yeah. guys know this is where I live. Is yeah. 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 yeah, you need to do like one of those like or like like proto vice kind of things. Like I'm yeah, turn it, yeah, turn the, it all back on itself, kind the, of yeah. like old right. good vice. Like you need to do that because I'm curious, but yeah, I either way man like, it's, it's crazy just... yeah what's actually funny i was gonna um i met there there was when i lived with uh, our old, old landladies a couple houses ago or whatever they, they were super based on all this stuff during that it was actually a blessing to be with them they're like twin sisters you know and we rented a little i had a little spot like a tiny house out front and uh, it was a blessing to be around there 2020 2021 with those guys and they went to all these crazy like secret portland meetings because 
all the people that were like, yeah, masks are gay, dude. We don't want to do this shit. There was like a small percentage of people in town that would go to these little meetings. I never went. That's not even, I'm, I'm even not even down with that shit. I'm like, whatever. I don't want to go to like a meeting about that stuff. But some guy from that, um, from that little group or whatever came by and he was giving away a bunch of books. And uh, this is, I think right before Gain of Fiction started. And he's like, yeah, here you go. He gave me like, a third of the list on game fiction <laughs> was, crazy, dude. including Dahlgren and uh, blood meridian and stuff so I, I was yeah i was like okay this guy's cool you know so that's a cool box it. dude if you got samuel sure. delaney and cormac mccarthy in there like that's a guy where i'm like well what yeah. else you got going on because i, yeah. I didn't know, know yeah i didn't know how cool it was at the time i was like oh thanks you know these look pretty pretty serious you know and then yeah shout out that guy yeah he's cool excellent yeah. so uh -huh. Um, yeah. I guess uh, the last thing I wanted to ask you guys, uh, I asked Brad this last time, but like, who are you guys waiting on to die so you can cover? <laughs> oh. Like, no, I know you're not wishing death. I just mean like, yeah. you're like, man, like it would be kind of sick if we, cause you have rules. You got a year and a day. You can't. I'll, be, I'll, yeah. I'll say one because I think he would, he himself would appreciate it. Uh, I cannot wait until Doug Stanhope dies. <laughs> uh, doesn't he do his own death pool he and all that? I mean, and I love yeah, it. Yeah, not yeah. not yeah. for many years. And I, uh, this is a joke. I love Of course. Stanhope, no, but yeah, yeah, content, yeah. Brad and I, content. you know, Brad yeah. turned me on to Doug Stanhope many, many years yeah. ago. And I've since seen him four or five times. Yeah, funny, funny, Man. funny comedian and a comedian's comedian. And uh, yeah, he will be fun to cover because, of course, he's also a great writer. He wrote he's written a couple of memoirs, Digging Up Mother. I mean, come on. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, so great. Man, that's that is a tough question, man. I. Gosh. Who would I want? There's no you know, it's it's kind of. Uh, this is sort of strange. I mean, I tend to gravitate towards the writers, but like there's not really a ton of living ones who I think I'm really dying to like dig into their juicy story. That's another I, problem, right? Like, right. Yeah. I, one that I do kind of, and I, 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 I want to do, but it's going to have, it's going to require a totally different kind of art effort than we normally put in. Um, Thomas Ligotti, people might, people might know Thomas Ligotti, mostly short stories, very much sort of, kind of doing what Lovecraft was doing, but very much in his own vein, kind of a nihilist, wrote these great short stories. Um, Grim Scribe is one collection. Um, and then he also wrote uh, a book of philosophy called The Conspiracy Against Man. And uh, he lives in like in the Detroit area somewhere, but he's very reclusive. Nobody really knows anything about him. And, you know, maybe maybe a few years from now, we can kick up a Art of Darkness Kickstarter and we can like actually go do some like field research and oh man find yeah. some people who know him that kind of thing That'd so sick. yeah there's, cool. there's a few there's a few that i i mean look there's i i'm as a person with a list of things i'm going to cover somebody's like hey you should do this and i'm like yeah 2027 i'm on it you know <laughs> yeah. like yeah like, <laughs> no, truly it's, it's not a, it's not yeah. it's not like being uh you know it's not i'm not being a prick about it but i'm like yeah that i that does sound good but you yeah. know but like ambrose bierce i always thought would be like really good yeah like, we definitely uh, he's on he's on our list for hg sure. wells hg wells is an interesting one too yeah, like be, there's some there are some, you guys leagues. even yeah. if you think you're running out of great artists you do still have the there's there's always yeah. gonna be too many right like we got like, like four or five seasons worth probably on our list i would say wow. right now <laughs> yeah that's yeah. what's cool about yeah. books uh, it, it really extends your vision you're like oh yeah this decade i could get to this and it's it's that's kind of oh, new yeah. to me i feel yeah. you know it's yeah. where music you just put it on it's of the moment and stuff yeah and yeah. there are definitely there are definitely like people we cover because it's like it's not so much we just want to cover them but we want to just like put our we don't want to we want to look into that uh thing that scene that time that place whatever and at least touch on somebody in, in that um yeah. i think we did that like with the we did an episode on hp lovecraft and one on robert e howard so like we kind of got this like weird american pulp era yes um kind of somewhat there's a couple other people who'd be worth talking about for sure but like you know so we got something there and we just did flannery o'connor so now we got and we've done faulkner so we got at least uh we've got a toe in the southern literature uh arena mm -hmm. and you know there's a, there's a bunch of these so yeah. yeah sometimes it might be about thinking like hey we haven't done a fill in the blank you know we need to find a good one yeah yeah no, that's true because you want it and then like it's always cool what door that opens up like you know when you get into like a thing you're like i didn't think i'd ever be like covering a country you know like i didn't grow up listening to country music but like it's like once you realize you're like because that's kind of like what this is right at the end of the day like everything you consume ends up being for something you're going to talk about when you do when you do this so it's kind of like 
you know, people are like, well, it's so, so much work. And it's like, well, yeah, but it's something I'm interested in, you yeah. know, like at least it's uh -huh. at least it's fun, you know, and yeah, I probably would be reading almost as much as I do, uh, mm -hmm. but I, it would be a lot more scatterbrained it would yeah. be all over the place. Well, and now yeah. you guys do both have your uh, ventures other than other than uh, other than the podcast world. You, now, now, Kevin is a playwright. Um, which we didn't really talk about much there. Uh, I know about the COVID 2020 playwright stuff from Clifton Duncan, like kind of because he was in a, he was, a, yeah, he, he did yeah. a good job talking about how insane that insane. field was. Like, oh, yeah, they, it's theater kids. Yeah. I mean, they've always been, yeah. they've yeah. always yeah. been the vanguard of the mad. Uh, I mean, you know, the American <laughs> theater people are yeah. the most deranged people on the planet. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm, part, I'm part of it, you know, I'm going yeah. to a conference uh, in Alaska in, uh, in June, um, you know, I'm sure I'll win no friends saying this, but I think a lot of them kind of, well, in fact, I know many, many of them quietly go, we've gone crazy. We've lost our minds, but everybody does it on the DL right. because they're afraid of their reputation. And meanwhile, they've got to post all the right things all the time on, on Facebook. If you ever want to have, you know, any hope of a career. Um, but I do my own thing. So I'm kind of at, a, I'm kind of at a, I don't give a damn point. Um, I have a theater company of my own called Bad Mouth Theater Company here in Minnesota. Right. It's badmouthtc.com. I'm working on lots of different projects. Uh, I'm working on my with my writing partner Abby Lucas. I'm working on a uh, kind of a like an AI horror radio Ooh, play cool. script that's going to be cool for radio a group play. called Yeah, yeah, and this will wow. come out online, so stay tuned. Very um, cool. This is through a group called um uh, Dark Pony Radio, Shadow Horse, uh, Shadow Horse Theater. They're like a local company. And here in the Twin Cities, we're also going to do my play, Moderation, which is about uh, online content moderators losing their minds at work. <laughs> We are going to do that. Um, Never happens yeah. here yeah. in town. Yeah, it's based on a you know real story. Um, yeah. Here in wow. town in St. Paul in October. So stay tuned for that. And then probably also in London, I'm talking with a director and a producer over there. Oh, and so yeah. things are happening. And uh, you know, theater got totally kicked in the teeth by by COVID. And you you would think these folks would be the first to stand up for IRL. It's your job. Media. Yeah, you That's, lost but, your job. <laughs> but but you right no, but they are they but yeah. they love their unions and they love their belonging right. and they love their NPR and their God, if only the New York Times would one day review me, I could be a real boy or shim <laughs> or girl or whatever. They're just and it's just like I, you know, I don't I want I've I've i I'm 41 years old, dude. I'm I'm done. I'm done <laughs> oh, you know, man. trying to play along. Hell you know, yeah. and I'm not a hateful person either. Like I, I will meet people where they are and, and yeah. try to be civil and, right. and yeah. kind I mean, and Christian. Um, but I just, after COVID too, it's a little bit like, well, go fuck yourself. I don't, you yeah. know, <laughs> you're, you're, you went along, you are a hundred percent the armband people and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, yeah. the masks we were, were armbands, man. Yeah. Um, man. Say. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> no, no, I, there agree. You go. I agree. No, but uh, the reason yeah, I yeah. brought that up, brought up both of your ventures. Now they're both kind of long processes to put out. A lot of times, even by the time something comes out, you're kind of on to the next one. You're yeah, kind of like, yeah. okay, but, but it comes out. Now, Brad, you wrote a, a novel called House of Sleep. I will be getting – I know I said I'd get it to it last year, but it's coming oh, this year, I'm and sorry. we're going to have yeah. you on to talk about it because, I, because <laughs> yeah. oh, no, yeah. truly, I, I need to do a better job of reading the – the like, literally people who come on our show, like, their stuff. Um, so I need to do a better job of that. But now you've already – you're already on to your next novel. Oh, yeah. I heard that happen. But what's it like? Because yeah. the reason I love this form right here is because I just – I'm putting this out right after we done we're done yeah. right you know yeah. I'm, it's, it's yeah. out it's done people can consume it you know tom petty said the waiting is the hardest part and that's true for me i'm impatient and even if something doesn't go as planned next week's different you know right. but yeah. like right. these long form things like how do you guys do that how do you guys just sit on something for so long how does it how does it yeah. stay burning in your mind yeah you know, well, like, like for the the writing the the writing is tough i mean the uh it's it seems silly in a lot of ways to relate art and and religion in some way, but I'll tell you the for me the thing that about writing that is quasi religious is there's this there's a certain degree of faith that's involved, like yeah. and the faith is just that this process will be worth it in some way and fill in what you mean by worth it, right? Um, and so that's always kind of motivating. I also just like the work. Um, an ideal right. world they would just yeah. you'd be, i would just be paid and i would <laughs> do what i do what i want to do uh -huh. which, is, which is right i mean it's the first thing i do every day um cool. but but you know there's there's it is it is challenging especially when you're you know i'm pretty active on twitter and that kind of thing and you constantly want to be 
you I, i'd love to be just sending stuff out right just like right. here's yeah. the first chapter here's the second chapter serializing almost yeah. right but yeah. you, you end up kind of spoiling you can kind of spoil it for people that mm -hmm. way you're also going to put out stuff before it's actually ready yeah you know i'm i'm a bit of a perfectionist on the writing side like i need that thing baked to perfection and if it's not it just, i'll just throw it in the garbage right um so so all of that takes time and it's taken me a while to like appreciate that i mean i've been working on the book i'm working on now i've been working on it for four almost four years wow mm -hmm. i'm almost done now final draft i'm about a third of the way or so through the final draft so it's coming later this year one way or another but are um, you looking to self-publish or or i'm gonna try to not do that this time we'll see though we'll see what, How, what was that like what was that i mean i've heard mixed i i we have good friends uh mm -hmm. Um, uh, Kelby Lowsack and J. David Osborne, they host a podcast called Ag Agitator, and they're yeah, both yeah, uh, writers. And they're, I, I, I was just saying, I'd love to see you guys collaborate, um, on the in the podcast medium because they have a they have a, a thing called Broken River Collective where it's like it's not an official, like you know, yeah. clock in, clock out factory thing, but it's just a bunch of writers that are like quasi self publishing, but like together, you know, mm -hmm. and and I like that. I think that's the best way to do it because it's got to be tough to just self publish when everybody makes something like it seems yeah. like everybody's got like a thing and it's tough to stand out that way and you want like the promotional money behind it and yeah stuff. Like, i understand both but also self-publishing yeah. it's all you you get it, it's, yeah it's you you, you, you know self-publishing I, I i'll just be totally honest you know like i think people have come across my book and be like he chose to self-publish how interesting <laughs> I mean, I take that as kind of a compliment, as though yeah. I had an option. Right. Like, right, right I literally, right. I sent that novel to, or excerpts, or the whole novel to fifty to sixty different agents and publishers. Wow. Nobody wanted it. Yeah. So, I was sort of like, well, th this was actually there was like a moment, um, kind of leading up to our darkness coming out, where I really had a moment of like, oh, dude, sorry, and this is me talking to myself. Sorry, man, you don't get to be Cormac McCarthy. Like, you don't get to just, like, every once in a while send something in the mail and fat checks show up. Like, you, you, <laughs> God, like you're going to have to you're gonna have to do something different different yeah. from that. So I thought I was self-published. And, you know, I think I had when I think when House of Sleep came out, I think I had 300 followers on Twitter, maybe. Um, I didn't spend any time on there. Podcast that the podcast came out and my book came out, I think, the same month, actually, or within a month of each other. So the fact that it got rejected so hard and i was like there's no way this is this is actually pretty good like yeah. and i know because i spent every you know i spent four year four or five years working on that so yeah i don't i don't know i guess i'm kind of rambling now but that process is you have to like you have to let's roll with roll with the setbacks yeah. i guess like it's gonna go if it's if it's not gonna go your way you got to figure out a way to to make it happen some way or another i mean that's that's yeah yeah it's it's a tough I, industry to do anything in yeah go ahead. can i ask you about tarot or tarot yeah well yeah it's something else i, I do wanna, tarot, tarot reading so yeah i want to a reasonable fee guys yeah, yeah. For a reasonable yeah. fee i love the his way tarot his that. tarot yeah. readings are are awesome really. yeah you you gave me a little and i i asked you on twitter and you were kind enough to to throw down for me because my yeah, yeah you owe brad money friends. actually i do I, yeah the, yeah, yeah so yeah. we'll just tell him, yeah. him yeah. later uh, yeah yes <laughs> But I want to, I guess, well, I, I just want to get the general gist of it because I'm kind of getting into that. Yeah. Um, but also I know a lot, like I have some friends, you seem pretty solid, but I know a lot of people that are into like tarot and they're just like, oh, you're, it's bad. Everything's bad on yeah. the deck. And I'm <laughs> I'm like, Yo, it, I don't want to do this now because it's, but it's also, it's really cool and the art's cool and you could tell it's vibed up. But also I, yeah. I want to avoid that thing, <laughs> aspect of it and just be obviously obviously take bad cues if they come but that's right. kind of my main question on it because yeah I, like I'm, worried, I'm thinking of one guy in particular i'm just like dude <laughs> maybe you well, need to like relax <laughs> yeah i think yeah. i mean you know it's it's funny like um one piece of advice or way of thinking that ha is helpful for for me and it's it's funny because i've i've taken it seriously like almost as an academic subject for a while and then the, the practice of actually giving readings is like kind of a whole nother thing um one thing is to not take it too seriously yeah. um and, and it doesn't mean it's not real or it's not helpful or it's not meaningful or or it's yeah. not deep but like you have to kind of hold all of this stuff kind of carefully because i think what happens people are like well this is clearly an instruction from the universe about what i have to do yeah. right. um and even if it's not to that level they can they can they can fall for like the children's illustrated bible version 
of, yeah. of what's happening. And that's no knock on the Bible. It's like they had to simplify things so kids would understand some of the core concepts, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, um, so, so that would be one thing. And I think, I think before, how would I put this? You can, you really need to spend some time. One thing that can be helpful is spend some time just trying to figure out what the cards mean, according to various people who've, yeah. who've written about them okay. before you even relate them to yourself. So you pull a card and it's not like, what does this mean to me? It's yeah. like, just generally, what does this mean? Right. Yeah. And then as you kind of stack some of those up, I think later when you bring them together, you can be a little bit you can be a little bit more analytical about what these patterns are suggesting rather than. Okay. So then the devil pops up and it's not about being demonically possessed. Right. It's about yeah. the fact that you eat too many donuts or something. Yeah. You know, whatever <laughs> it might be. Yeah. yeah. I like I, I didn't know that the they have roots with the playing cards, the 52 card deck, and it's almost the same in a lot of yeah. ways. I thought that was cool. And then yeah, they... it's basically, it's basically the same deck. It came out of like Italian card playing in the, yeah. uh, in the 1300s actually. Yeah. 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 So, well, thank anyways, you. guys, I, I mean, uh, I'm, thank you guys for coming through. I'd love to do this again sometime. So it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, and I like to get you guys away from your source material a little bit. You know what I mean? And <laughs> we, we, of course we talked about some of your subjects, but it's always fun. I think it's always good to have other places where somebody can bring out, you know, uh, this is the art of darkness core episode. Yeah. That's basically yeah. what we were just there doing. We go. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, and oh, yeah. Glenn, Cy, I appreciate the opportunity because you're right. It's like, we come in, we just did yeah. a, we just did a couple episodes in the last week and we come in, we got notes. We're ready to go. Yeah, right. We're trying to make yeah. something entertaining, but we're, and you know, this I is just, this said is just no. fun and cool. I, I explicitly yeah. said there are no topics. There are nothing. I'm just like I, <laughs> yeah. I got, and which which I think we all can agree is is good to do sometimes because yeah, totally. uh, the time the the source material stuff gets out of hand. But yeah, it's uh, we got to keep doing this sometime. Um, yeah. And uh, and definitely, I, I'm trying to find a way to peel you guys away so you can come on my fiction show. Um, just because I I hate giving people who do fiction like and I, I hate giving them more work because it's tough like you know it's like are, oh are yeah. you all are, are you all gonna do dune at some point dude i i, I might have to because I can't, I, I can't finish it i like it's one of the few okay. books i just <laughs> couldn't do but i but I, I am sisyphus though like i i do, when i find out i can't finish a book like or something or i can't get into something i force myself to do it so i think i might need to do it you know because yeah. we brad and i are both uh obsessed or at least we appreciate dune too i am obsessed I, i've been obsessed like five times I thought, yeah, I thought I think it's yeah. Yeah. yeah and and our reading schedule is so gnarly that we're like okay how are we actually going to reread the book and, and we're yeah. like well we have a book club so let's throw it into the book club at the end of this year so i'm just saying we're already going to be reading dune you know like around yeah. december time but yeah no anytime i mean and it well, doesn't I, have I to wanna, be that i don't mean i want to do something your, that you yeah that you've already read perhaps to where like like or something you know a lot now i know kevin you're a big jonathan franzen fan so i i would like to do I, some yeah. i would like to do well, the no, are you teasing point yeah, you're teasing i actually like i actually like the corrections no <laughs> you, I, I, yeah. I no no no. i want to do it i i've never read it but my mom used to cycle Why out you... books a lot she yeah. would she would she would cycle it out um and it was always on but that was the one that she never returned to the bookstore like that, that was, was always no. like I would just see. I didn't that know was what her, it was. That was her Dune. The corrections yeah. was your mom's Dune. Yeah. Why do you yeah. think that I'm? Why do you think? Are you teasing? Why do you think I'm a gi hmm. uh, giant Franzen fan? You've brought it up on the show. I listened. Have to I? Darkness. Yes, you have. You absolutely <laughs> okay. have brought it. All right. No, no, I'm a big. Don't make I'm me go. Big, don't a, okay. No, that's fine. No, no. Yeah, no I'm just like trying to. I'm it. trying to. Yeah. I said a lot of shit online about a lot of things, Glenn. No, this was on a pod. This was on a pod. You had said the corrections. Yeah. I don't know. You obviously he's alive. It wasn't freedom too. Yeah. yeah, freedom okay. is freedom is like set right here in St. Paul. It's a great kind of St. Paul novel. Um, yeah, oh, no, yeah. Totally. I'm not yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, I haven't read him. I, yeah, I want yeah, to read yeah, yeah. him. So, I, oh, dude, but, we um, could do we, we could do like Tree of Smoke would be a banger to do under the volcano. If you all haven't done Under the Volcano, Brad and I would totally be able to come something. On. Yeah, another one would be yeah. Delillo. Is it Omega Point, Brad? Yeah, that I one? Think we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we could find yeah. something short. I could throw you. I could throw you some ideas. I'd I'd, probably, I'd focus on shorter stuff, probably like that. No, I agree. Page agreed. or less. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, agree. Kind of stuff. Um, there's yeah. plenty of good candidates in that. In that. All right. Yeah. Well, then we'll have to we'll have to do that because I, I just like that's the, always the eternal thing. It's like they cover this. We should collaborate, but when? You know, yeah. <laughs> like on that, yeah. it's much yeah. easier to invite you guys on to riff. You know, For which sure. is always fun. But I do want to eventually do uh, get you guys in the GOF lab, dude. That'd so, um, but great. anyways, uh, Art of Dark Pod, Patreon, oh, Patreon.com/slash Art of Dark Pod. Go there first. Go there first. <laughs>
did that first uh, and then work your way back uh, um, there. Uh, House of Sleep. Be on the lookout for, uh, I'm sorry, say the play one more time. Be the, Moderation. The, yeah, be on, be on the lookout for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, everybody have a safe week. Catch you guys next time. Yeah.